This is Performers Wanted. Hello and welcome back to the show, y'all. Today we're going to be talking to Kenzie Elizabeth, who you probably know from everywhere, from TikTok, American Idol. You probably listened to some of her original music. Let's pop in and see how she's doing. Kenzie, hi. How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing all right. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, pretty happy that you, you came in um, because I'm actually a bit of a fan myself. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm a bit of a no, fan. We, we have Kenzie Elizabeth here um, who, if you haven't heard her voice, if you haven't heard her voice, you haven't heard much of anything yet because <laughs> when I tell you she has pipes, she's got pipes uh and also a very talented songwriter as well we're going to talk about that a little bit too um um i my you know i was familiar with you for a while but you know i actually myself i, I downloaded loaded your uh, your single inner me um and that's a part of my playlist so this is actually pretty cool to talk to you about that but before i like spoil everything and tell <laughs> everyone everything they need to know about you yeah. why don't you do me a favor and for folks who don't know who you are why don't you introduce yourself yeah well hi everyone i'm kenzie elizabeth um i consider myself kind of like a multifaceted artist so i I uh, started with like musical theater in that world, um, but I also am a dancer, I'm an actor, um, but more recently, like I started writing music when I was about 12, but started taking it really seriously during the pandemic because mm -hmm. I had nothing better to do, <laughs> don't we all, um, <laughs> during the pandemic. So I um, started to kind of look into garage band at first just to kind of get away because I'd never produced anything before it was just me and my piano up to that point right and um so I did a little bit of garage band which then led me a year later into logic and I started doing that and then the content creation also started in 2020 as well during the pandemic so it's just kind of all like happened mm -hmm. in the last few years but I've always been like involved in the performing arts since I was little Okay. Yeah. Well, I definitely can tell you definitely got the <laughs> the credentials for it too. Thank um, you. So let's let's go into a little bit. You know, we're gonna go back to pandemic. And sure. since since this is a podcast that you know I've been interviewing a lot of performers, at some point it goes back to that. So it's like a series of just like how would it you know how it affected us. It affected everybody in different ways, but it affected us in a very interesting way because our work wasn't it was considered essential but not at the same time to the point where like they could shut down everything but in, at the same time it's like oh you, you still need something so that we right. don't go crazy um so you you're starting to do things you're starting to produce things maybe like put some music out there and you're starting with garage band as like uh -huh. we are um and that was pretty much just like you know, you, you need to hone your craft somehow because we're sitting at home. Yeah. Um, so what was that What was that process like? I mean, because, you know, I was working with GarageBand for a long time, too, and it can be pretty useful. You know, if you're a Mac user, you get GarageBand immediately. Right. Um, so anyone can kind of use it, but it is kind of funky and it's not particularly, like, um, the best to use. I uh -huh. mean, you can use what you got, but, like, um, tell us, like, your process about that and then jumping into logic which is like yeah. you really just like jump the spectrum <laughs> from there <laughs> um so the reason i chose garage Man is one the accessibility of it um and as a first time like producer person i was like i don't want to invest in something that i don't even know how to do quite yet so I did GarageBand for a little while and the process of that, it was interesting because I, uh, I had a keyboard, like I had like an 88, I'm a big fan of like weighted keys. And mm -hmm. so I, um, uh, when I was around 14, I was gifted a piano, an 88 key weighted piano that I just, it's my baby. I love it with my heart and soul. Right. But mm -hmm. I didn't really understand the whole MIDI connection or anything like that. I just was like, oh, it's an electric piano that's it. <laughs> and so uh, during GarageBand, I didn't realize that I can actually plug in my keyboard to the laptop and use it that way. So I was quite literally just using the, the laptop keyboard that, mm -hmm. you know, that comes with the, the laptop. Right. Um, and I re realized right away that the sounds 
that were being produced in like the um the plugins that were offered in GarageBand, they did not sound authentic at all. Mm -mm. Um I, it was a good like royalty was my first ever song that I produced and it was all created with the laptop keyboard. Um mm -hmm. and it turned out all right like from you know as the, especially like a first song that you I've ever produced it it turned out really fun. Um but it definitely like the cello sounds it did not sound real. Um the drums were a little interesting. I feel like the overall quality of it and the mic that I had, I hadn't invested in a mic quite yet. It was one of those mm -hmm. um like $20 mics you got at like, you know, Best Buy or something like that, like one of those Right. Um, you know, uh, the ones that you have at karaoke, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. So it wasn't like a super high quality mic for recording purposes, right. uh, but it did the job. And so I was like, okay, cool. So I did royalty, wish you knew and push you away all within like a span of a couple of months on mm -hmm. GarageBand with no piano keyboard or anything. It was just like the, the laptop itself. But then, um, as I started to write more, um, I was like, I really want to kind of make this an investment I want, you know, because after using GarageBand for a little bit, I started to know my way around the software. Um, and then I started talking to, because I was still attending Western Oregon University at the time. And mm -hmm. it was all online, but I still had, um, like, connections to people in the music department and specifically um, in, like, the music production department. And so I would mm -hmm. occasionally, like, email or call, you know, some people that I knew. I was like, how do I do this? Or, like, what would you recommend here? And so I started to know my way around the system. And then somebody was like, well, uh, Logic is very similar. It's a very similar layout to GarageBand. It just one it's it's a little you know it costs more but you get what you pay for you get more authentic sounds you get mm -hmm. a wide variety in your library of sounds and then um you also have more more control over like the tempos and, and stuff like that so and again mm -hmm. i'm not like a, a trained producer i just learned all of this by like toggling <laughs> buttons and like what works what sounds good so right. i i don't really know the technical terms of like the differences and similarities between the two but all i did know is that it was an investment that I was willing to make. And it was either that or Ableton um, were the two that I, I heard about. And I was like, well, Logic is the most similar to what I've been using. So it, it, will, it won't be as like foreign to me. And so about a year, I want to say it was that because I started making it, those songs, summer of 2020. So I want to say like cri around like Christmas time into like the new year of 2021 is when um, I invested in Logic. And it was all kind of like a trial and error process, you know what I mean? Um, still kind of figuring out how to do it. But then I eventually figured out that, oh, I can connect my keyboard <laughs> yes. to the laptop. So that made a world of difference too, because that's, yeah, that's what you um, <laughs> I, was a, I was able to play around with dynamics. And like, you know, mm -hmm. when you're using the... Um, laptop keyboard you can't really uh, do like you know crescendos decrescendos uh mm -hmm. the, the, the piano for example it sounds the exact same no matter what note you press whereas if you're doing it on an actual midi keyboard you have control over like the sustain and the you know everything mm -hmm. so um my album i decided i wanted to make an album after i started to kind of play around and, and create a couple more songs and inner me it's funny you bring up inner me because that was um a song that i had written just on piano in 2018 when i was attending amda because i would be in the practice rooms like all the time <laughs> just like creating <laughs> stuff right. um but i was like i kind of want to go back to some of my old songs that i've created just on the piano and see if i can add more instruments and mm -hmm. I'm a big sucker for strings. Um, I love strings with my whole heart. I mm -hmm. played a little bit of violin growing up, but I didn't, um, one, I didn't stick with it. And I, I tried to go back to lessons, um, online lessons in 2021 uh, at my, my undergrad, but um, I just, I didn't stick with it, you know? And so the MIDI keyboard allowed me to like have the violins without actually needing to play the violin. <laughs> <laughs> and so Inner Me was a lovely way, it was a lovely piece to like explore the different dynamics in the strings with the MIDI. Um, and then once I, you know, started to compose the songs on Logic, I was like, oh, this could like actually make a full length album. And mm -hmm. so, but it was so funny because I didn't really have a theme for the album. I was just like, right. let's compose a bunch of songs and put them all together. And that's yeah. the album. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was interesting because it was a mix of songs that I had written within the last week and then also a mix of songs that I had written like five years prior. 
So they like um, sounded kind of different. Like they're kind of like, yeah, you exactly. know, you're growing but and so Exactly. Like the lyrics, you know, I've grown a lot with my lyricism. I'm a big sucker for like internal rhymes um, mm -hmm. as opposed to like, like couplets and stuff like that. I'll, but I'll try and play around with it and do different things. Um, and then from there, I've stuck with Logic. And the cool thing about Logic is once you pay for it, you never have to pay for it again. As long as you have the same Love Apple that. ID. You can do any, uh, like, I changed, I ended up um, upgrading my laptop, um, but I signed in with my same Apple ID. My projects, unfortunately, like, I had to save them on a different, you know, I had to save them from, uh, in, like, a, a file, separate file, because it didn't save the projects themselves. Right. Um, but I was able to access my account and not have to pay for it again with the new laptop. So that mm -hmm. was nice. Um, but, yeah, from there, it's just been kind of, like, trial and error um i watch a lot of like youtube tutorials on different things and mm -hmm. i still am not considering myself like a full producer like i have someone that does mm -hmm. my mix and mastering for me i um currently with the new album that i'm writing i'm having one of my really good friends actually play guitar like in them because there's times where i've tried to make the guitar sound real and it's just not right. i can't get the strumming right or i can't get mm -hmm. you know what i mean um but I've definitely figured out how to make the instruments sound real enough, right. which is nice. It's been, it is nice. Yeah. Okay. All right. You know, you brought up something uh, interesting a little bit ago and uh, yeah. how you're like practicing in the, uh, the Amda room. Yeah. Um, and you're like writing songs. So that makes me wonder is like, have you been writing your own music for like, like a, a decent duration of your time as a performer or has it did like spark while you're at school? Were you majoring in it? Like was yeah. there something? What, That's what was a good that? question. So the songwriting itself started when I was around 12. Okay. Um, it was like 11, 12, like right in, in there. My grandmother played piano at uh, her church. Mm -hmm. And so she had a piano in her house like at all times and so growing up um you know from the time I was a wee little child until around <laughs> like 11 I would just kind of sit at the piano but I didn't know what the heck I was doing I was just right. kind of like mm, da, da, da. <laughs> and um eventually my grandmother was like okay um I'm gonna teach you some basics of piano but it wasn't like a full piano lesson it was more so like okay here's certain fingering that you would use or you know it didn't get into music theory <laughs> mm -hmm. it was just kind of like okay right. use these three fingers and, and go off from there you know what I mean right um, and at the community theater that my mom, um, she was directing and choreographing at the community, the local community theater. And mm -hmm. I was there with her all the time. I wasn't yet a part of the shows, you know, cause mm -hmm. I was still doing school and stuff like that. Um, and I would be in, you know, just waiting for her, the rehearsals cause the rehearsals were like three to four hours and she taught classes before that. So I would like, as soon as school was over at 3 p.m., go straight there and stay till like 10 o'clock at night. And so mm -hmm. I would be in the practice rooms just like playing around on the piano and like doing schoolwork, but mostly the piano. <laughs> mostly the piano. Um, and then eventually I started just like writing lyrics and they weren't very good, but they were there, right? Yeah. Um, and then eventually I created like my first full length song called Unbreakable um, because I. Um, you know, there was, it was a little crush I had at 10, 12. <laughs> and I was like, oh, you know, we're stronger than steel, stronger than metal. It was like that kind of thing. And it was really cute. Um, <laughs> but I ended up, uh, you know, doing that. And I I, I kept writing after mm -hmm. that because I was like, oh, this is kind of fun. It's kind of cool. Um, but then I never really did anything with it until I was 15. Um, mm -hmm. One of my mentors, his name is Keith Casey, um, he... Uh, knew well didn't he did a little bit of research on like recording studios in the area and uh he became friends with one of uh like the recording producers um and they were able to get me into a recording studio um and we recorded unbreakable and a couple other songs and um it was a really it was just me and my piano but it was like that was my first experience of like actually putting my stuff out because then we released it on, on streaming platforms. But because I was still a minor, my family, my mother, my father, and then, um, you know, my close friends and then my mentor and then grandmother, everybody was like, let's, you know, because you're still a minor, let's try and keep your identity a little hidden mm -hmm. <laughs> until yeah. you get like a full social media presence, you know? Right. And so that's where KZ Liz stemmed because it's short for Kenzie Elizabeth. 
mm-hmm. but it's not Kenzie Elizabeth. <laughs> 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 and so that's where the persona Kenzie or uh, Casey Liz came in mm-hmm. with Unbreakable and then a couple other singles that I released. Um, but then uh, that same mentor, Keith Casey, started just writing, like we started um, writing a kid's show called Comfy mm-hmm. Land. Um, just to kind of produce for fun. Like, all of this, it wasn't, like, super serious. Like, we were just doing this for fun, right? Because I had started writing, mm-hmm. but then I was like, ah, I was doing it all the time. And um, <laughs> my mom was always in the arts, and, you know, my dad was supportive with that, too. So um, it was all just kind of, like, growing up, it was all just kind of, like, uh, a part of my life. And so mm-hmm. when we started writing Comfy Land the Musical, uh, Keith, Casey, and I... Um, he also started writing these like other songs. I'm um, just like in his songbook. And it was just like, he would spend like five, like he would like put all the lyrics down in like five minutes. And I was like, how are you doing that? It takes me like <laughs> two hours. Right. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> so he has this entire songbook. And then over the next couple of months, like during comfy land. And then after we had put comfy land up at the community theater locally, um, mm-hmm. I started to kind of create melodies and chord progressions to those lyrics. And so there's a couple of them um, that I ended up uh, releasing. One of them is Don't Fall Asleep, which none of those are on streaming platforms anymore, except for YouTube. You can Mm. find them on YouTube. Um, (laughs) But there's a couple of them that he's written that Mm. I did not write the lyrics, but I composed the arrangement and the melody. And then I took a little bit of a break from songwriting to focus on dance um and like the musical theater side because i was i started then doing community theater productions i didn't do high school theater but throughout high school um i did like you know you know community theater productions Mm -hmm. and then um i ended up majoring in theater arts at sierra college which is a jc that was like 10 Mm -hmm. minutes away from my house and um i was gonna graduate with my aa degree um but then I got, I auditioned for AMDA, um, mm-hmm. American Musical and Dramatic Academy, specifically the Los Angeles campus to get my BFA okay. in musical theater. And I thought I was going to get my A and then transfer, but I did not. I ended up transferring right away. <laughs> okay. So I did three semesters of JC and then I moved to AMDA. Um, okay. And I was still like majoring in musical theater. But at that point in time, I had access to all the practice rooms and I had nothing better to do with my time except for rehearse the Mm -hmm. the songs for my classes and write and so that's Mm -hmm. when I started to write again so I took a break between like for about a year like between 16 and 17 sorry no that's right about 16 and 17 because I started AMDA um a couple weeks before my 17th birthday um so I did that and then I just kept writing and I haven't stopped since I have so many songs what will happen is I'll get to like the first verse and chorus and I'll be like great and the second (laughs) verse and I'm like no, it's not good. And then I like put it aside. <laughs> so I have so many unfinished songs. But during the pandemic was when I kind of like all those songs that I started writing, I started revisiting them and adding on to them and then started mm-hmm. producing them. And now we're here. And that was very long winded. <laughs> that was that was a movie right there. That was that was everything we need to know. Thank you guys for uh, coming up. We're <laughs> No, I'm Listen to us on oh Spotify, iHeartRadio, anywhere you get your podcast. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that was brisk. Um, that is all fascinating. That, that's all okay. really fascinating, especially like, you know, so this you grew up around this. You grew up around yeah. this, and it just sort of just, um, for lack of better words, like spawned this, this talent uh you. that you have like i'm just like now it's just like you you're like because you're like a melting pot of like everything thank you um that means a lot yeah of course you know that's what i'm seeing i um i was beginning to get familiar with you um i like i want to say recently but it really hasn't been all that recently anymore um especially you know you know since i'm talking about inner me and i still have that you know that's, that's yeah it's been a little bit um but during pandemic as well and you know and some folks who listen to this already know this but you know um i started making videos that were yeah based I remember. off of musical theater things and as that happened you know a bit more of the musical theater like community started to kind of like tap in a little bit mm-hmm. and i started to like find um you know people as well as we were doing this 
Uh-huh. And, you know, obviously we're making these and a lot of people have like dream roles and stuff like that that they want to like mm-hmm. to portray. And we weren't doing anything at the time in the, you know, 2020, 2021, 2022, you know, <laughs> like we're yeah. only doing too much. Um, so I, you know, I happened to had found you in that, you know, melting pot of everything. And um, I believe that the first thing I saw you do is I think I saw you singing something from Wicked, and it was specifically yep. saying, like, is singing yep. Fierro. Yep. Um, <laughs> oh, that video changed the trajectory of my life completely, like, did a full 180. It was so cool. <laughs> honestly, I, I mean, I was floored by it. Like, I was just like, <laughs> yeah. you know, because that's kind of one of those, like, musical theater, like, challenges on, like, yeah. TikTok and stuff like that. Let's see how, who can hit this in different ways. Yeah. So I'm just, like, scrolling through and stuff, like, oh, yeah, let's see what's going on, <laughs> like, things, and then all of a sudden, like, I, like, hear this, like, massive voice, this massive note, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> that means a lot, honestly, because at that point in time, I had, like, just, I didn't even start taking vocal lessons stuff till I was, sick, like, till amda so like Mm -hmm. 17 and i had just started finding my mix mix Mm -hmm. bell like whatever you want to call it i just started to like explore that not even like a year and a half prior Mm -hmm. two years prior so you saying that means a lot because i've noticed a significant amount of growth between then and now Mm -hmm. um but thank you thank you for saying that that's all yeah, I'm like, do that right now. I'm like, no, but no, I, you don't I, have to do it. See, I would, but I'm not warmed up. <laughs> no, I'm warm not going to you. Everybody, if you take anything from this podcast, please warm up your voice before you sing. Please, yes, please, absolutely. Please, please. <laughs> so that that changed the trajectory. I found you that yeah. way, and I'm sure certainly a lot of other people found you that way. You. Um, and in the in the world of TikTok, yeah. um, you um, you were pretty active on on TikTok and. Yeah. From there, I mean, hearing that, I mean, obviously, I'm just, people are going to keep coming back. Um, <laughs> so, could you explain to the listeners who may not have found you yet? You have plenty yeah. of followers, but um, <laughs> what's your content like? What can they find on your TikTok? What do you, what do they expect? Uh, see? I make so uh, it's a variety, honestly. Because, um, well, let me answer your question first, mm-hmm. and then and then I'll elaborate. Uh, you can find anything like theater related either like play musical theater kind of both because i i do both um dancing um so a lot of songwriting content just because it's something i'm really passionate about and i it's a way to kind of um i love creating my own material just in general Mm -hmm. um i'll also post like lifestyle related stuff so like day in the life or Mm -hmm. uh, like vlogging type things um just i to elaborate now is i (laughs) I post whenever I want and whatever I want. Mm -hmm. I know there's a lot of, like, discourse around, like, oh, you got to post on certain times and you got to post certain days and you got to post certain... It's like, no, just Mm -hmm. have fun with what you post and be random. I think it's so important, especially for social media, because more often than not, it's a highlight reel Mm -hmm. um, to be as authentic and honest as possible, especially in an industry... That is, I mean, there's so many people in this industry and there's a lot Mm -hmm. of people that are going out for these roles and going out for these productions and projects and stuff that trying to like mold yourself to fit in is just, mm -mm. so I try Mm -hmm. to be like as authentic as possible because it shows my individuality, Um, Mm -hmm. but that also shows up in my content because it's so like sporadic, (laughs) like you won't find like cleaning videos. You won't find, uh, <laughs> it looks queen not talk. that erratic. No queen it's talk. It's still within the world of performing arts, but it's like, it's very, like I said at the beginning, I, I consider myself very multifaceted, um, but I'm also a person as well. I'm not just like this artistic thing. I am a human being with thoughts, emotions, and feelings. So I try to like uh, encompass that in my social media too. Right. Right. I mean, just kind of keeping up in theme with that because, um, you know, I'm assuming that like, when you posted, you know, the Fiero clip, like you weren't like, oh, this is about to blow up. You just posted no. it. In fact, I was like, oh, I'm probably going to delete this tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh no, it's, it's, it's fine. It's okay. But I did it. I originally started TikTok. Uh, one, again, that mentor Keith Casey was like, this app TikTok is blowing up. 
up. You need to get on it if you want to, you know, like start to share. I was like, ah, no, it's fine. <laughs> it took me a couple months. <laughs> and then I started <laughs> posting. But then um, it started off as more of like a personal diary for myself, like a video diary, because I'm a big mm -hmm. fan of like watching growth throughout the months and years and stuff like that. And so I didn't even start it off being like, oh, I need followers or, oh, I need this community or, oh, I need to be, blah, blah. no, I just started it for like my own personal, like kind of looking back on things. And then when the Fiero video was posted, I was like, oh, this is like, I actually did this. I've never been able to do this before. And so it was like that kind of, that was my thought process. Mm -hmm. And then when it started to blow up, I was like, oh, oh, this is, it was a little overwhelming because mm -hmm. I got a couple like um like direct messages from some people that I didn't anticipate to get direct messages from mm -hmm. I was like what is happening this is like not real this is all fake this is like not real <laughs> and that's where American Idol reached out and I was like oh this is a joke like no mm -hmm. this is not it took me a couple days to respond to the American Idol message because mm -hmm. one they, and they messaged me on Instagram right. and I'm always like ah no, like this is not. But then I did my research and I, I communicated with some people that are very close to me and that I trust and, um, you know, gave it a shot. But that video, I mean, it, it literally it changed everything because from that point forward, um, I started to really find myself in a community of like like minded people. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just very supportive. And, you know, it was it was a really cool experience. And then from there with the American Idol stuff and then you know I ended up making my 54 below debut like a year and a half after that two years no yeah I guess it was like two years after that because then I ended up moving to the city it was like a whole thing but everything started from that one video because I was mm -hmm. like wow like I can actually do this I can actually yeah I can do this we're good <laughs> Right. Did it start to did it start to kind of blow up immediately or did it like sit for a little bit and then like no, all of a sudden? No, it did like, like <laughs> an hour. I was like, what is happening? <laughs> and then um, it was, it was the next day. I, <laughs> I was a nanny and <laughs> I was putting the kids to bed and the kids were already sleeping at that point and I was just kind of doing my homework. But then I, I had my notifications turned on because at that point, like I, I had like a lot like. If you think about, you know, six to eight thousand people in one room, that's a lot of people. But I only mm -hmm. had like six to eight thousand followers mm -hmm. because, you know, it was spanning over about because I had started it a year prior. So mm -hmm. it was like, you know, slowly building. But then all of a sudden my phone just started like lighting up and I was like, what's going on? And um I looked at my account and I would like, you know, the ninety nine plus notification thing. Mm -hmm. I would like open it and then I would refresh and I have ninety nine more and I'm like, what? What is going on? <laughs> um and I went from like eight thousand followers to like eighty and I was like, this is unreal. This is mm. what this is no, this is not real. Um, and I think from that point, I started posting more instead of like being super sporadic at, at first and doing more pop stuff. Cause I, at first I started with like riffing and pop stuff because that was mm -hmm. all, what I was seeing on my for you page. Right. I started to do more like musical theater stuff. And, um, and then the frozen stuff happened and it was just like, uh, it was just a very surreal experience because I couldn't fathom that many people hearing me sing, mm -hmm. let alone like telling me that they could hear me. Like, you know what I mean? Like talking mm -hmm. to me and like, I don't know. I feel like, yes, we're on a screen and yes, it's an electronic, but at the end of the day, those are real people behind the screen. Right. Yeah. And so I was like, this is scary. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it just, it turned into a really lovely community of people that um, I'm mm -hmm. very, very grateful to have. Um, and I've made a lot of really wonderful friends out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm, uh, TikTok changed my life. It literally changed my life, truly. Right. Um, yeah, I wouldn't be here where I am today without it, honestly. Since we're talking. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about Idol, because you said that, <laughs> that you know, Idol reached <laughs> out to you. And I just want to know what that, A, you know, I know it was, like, surreal, but it's just, like, yeah after the fact why don't you just like, take us down the story of what came after that so um during the process of filming for idol i <laughs> it's so funny because in my interviews i'm like 
uh, when they were interviewing me, I was like, oh, no, I'm, I'm not starstruck at all. They're just my colleagues. They're totally fine. Like, we're all just people, blah, 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 blah. In my head, I was freaking the F out. I was like, I, I, uh. And so I was hyper, um, and I was excited. And I, they, um, not necessarily in a bad way. Like, I'm, again, I'm very grateful for the opportunity. Um, but they, you know, they overhyped. And it was, you know, it's, it's, it's reality television. You know what I mean? That's all I'm going to say about that. It's reality television. And um, I think it was a wonderful experience, but it didn't set me back or put me forward. It was just kind of there. Um, I did meet some really wonderful friends out of it. Like I was saying with like the whole TikTok, I met some really cool people out of it. Um, and I got to be on a set. And I got to sing on television. You know what I mean? So, like, that in itself, I'm very, very, very grateful for. Um, but I think after the fact, um, I I wouldn't do reality TV again, to be honest. Just because I feel like a lot of it is staged. Um, a lot of it is, you know, it's it's over it's overhyped. But again, not necessarily, I'm not trying to badmouth idol because again I am so 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 appreciative of the opportunity and I am very grateful for what I got out of it but I would not do reality tv again <laughs> um <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'll just leave it at that <laughs> no I've, I've had I've definitely had some uh soirees with uh reality television um myself well, it's, it's and... media and like they're just doing their job it's media but yeah. I think the way that things are cut I think the way that things are kind of like um edited um and then like in the moment like during filming you know they they tell you to do things and you know yeah it's just it's it's i as someone who tries to be as authentic as possible and as honest as possible in my one my craft but just like as a human being i i try to be honest with myself but then with you know the people that i care for and, and stuff like that it was just, it, it wasn't, it just wasn't something that, um, I guess reflected my, my values in, do you know what I mean? Like I, 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 how do I put this? I feel like it was not as honest as I would have wanted it to be. If that makes sense. But again, I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful for the opportunity. Yeah, yeah, honestly, um, cause it is a good, like, opportunity, and once you, like, before you do it, you're like, oh my gosh, this is crazy, mm -hmm. and then after you do it, you're like, mm -hmm. that was a time. Yeah, yeah. I think I'll just, uh, hang out over here, though, and, yeah, uh, exactly. you know. Is, exactly, is I was also something? scared shitless, excuse my language, but I was, okay. <laughs> I was terrified in the room, and so, mm -hmm. <laughs> only my close friends really know this, um, but I... I didn't faint, okay? I didn't I didn't go down or anything, but I didn't blacked faint. out. I I couldn't remember <laughs> anything except for a couple things that happened like before and after I was done singing, but while I was singing, I was terrified of the song. Um I hmm. it was it sat in a really weird place in my voice. Right. And um I had practiced it, right? I you know, I'd worked it and stuff, but there was a couple like last minute changes that happened that kind of like threw my head in a in a tizzy, so mm -hmm. I was like, "Oh gosh, um I'm just going to go in there and do something. <laughs> and then when I got out, um, I think I was just like overwhelmed with a lot of different emotions. Um, one, it had been the best I had sung the song to that point. Okay. Um, so I was like proud of myself for that. But also I, thank you. But <laughs> also I, uh, because I was so stressed out, Again, not necessarily in a bad or good way. I was just, you know, I was stressed. Um, <laughs> I think I just, like, as soon as I exited the room, I saw my grandmother. <laughs> and she, she started crying before I even started crying. And mm. because she means so much to me, I was like, oh, no, don't cry, because I'm going to cry now. <laughs> and that was caught on film of me crying. And so I was like, oh, gosh, well, I guess now we're crying. It's fine. It's all good. It's um, okay. I'm also the type of person that just, like, um, I'm a cancer. Um mm -hmm. And so I wear my heart on my sleeve and I, I, I do really well now, you know, in the last like year to two years, I do really well at like keeping my composure and like, uh, not crying or anything like that. Um, 
crying is good. Crying is healthy. Yes. But I don't like do it excessively, um, like in in public, just because I I just I have no interest in that. Uh, it hurts. It gives me a headache, <laughs> for lack of better words. So I try not to do it. Um, but I I'm a very like uh, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Enthusiastic. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of like a, a specific word to use, but I'm very like. I show my emotions really easily. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think with Idol, because there were so many different emotions, I like, it was just like overwhelming, you know? And so right. I think that came across one, yes, in person, but because on film, everything is bigger, you mm -hmm. know? Um, it just, it came across a little, a little much in my opinion. <laughs> But it's okay. It's okay. It's all it's good. A, it's okay. We it's we good. are we are appreciative of the opportunities. Yeah, yeah. And it's and the people who know me and have seen me, um, you know, grow. It's it, that's all that really matters to me. Um, mm -hmm. I I also know, like internally, I am a much different person than I was even like a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. Let alone when it was filmed, October twenty twenty one. Like that's mm -hmm. it's so. I'm in a completely different point of my life, both mentally, physically um location wise like it's just mm -hmm. very very different so yeah it's good it's well, good it's good okay we're gonna talk about, we're gonna talk about your new album we're gonna talk okay. about what you're working on the new material <laughs> this is this is what we came here for we want to get the scoop <laughs> on the new album okay so yeah. name theme vibe <laughs> inspiration so, um fun fact i don't have a name for the album quite yet Still, still trying to figure that out. Um, I'm gonna come up with one right here, right now. <laughs> oh, see, I wish. I, it's so funny because the names um, I bounce them off between people that I'm close to. But um, I think once all the songs are done, it'll just kind of come to me because it's gonna be the essence of the piece collectively, mm -hmm. like as a whole, you know. Um, but uh, the inspiration for it. So I released an EP last October. And um, it was the first time I had really started, like, incorporating, uh, like, drums. Like, I had drums in my previous songs, but it was, like, like you know, I, actual me. It's, like, it was a different genre than I, what mm -hmm. I had done, if that makes sense. Right. Still my essence, still my sound. Um, like, you can tell it's Kenzie Elizabeth, but it was also the first time... In, I think it was seven years, I think. My mental math could be off, but um, that I had changed from Casey Liz and just went everything to Kenzie Elizabeth. So it was like a new era, right? Mm -hmm. But it was just an EP of a few songs. And I knew as soon as I released that, I was like, I want to make another album. And I want it to be so different than mm -hmm. what I've done. Like similar to the EP, but di way different, way different. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, I wanted to have like actual musicians. I wanted to still use Logic and still use my MIDI keyboard, but I wanted to, like, like really, you know, I, I see my stuff in, like, movies and TV shows and stuff like that. So I was like, this, I, I want this to be, like, mm -hmm. like, I want to feel the songs in my bones type feel. And I didn't right. get that feeling with my EP. Like, my EP, I was very proud of it. And I was very excited for the work that I put out. Um, but I, it's it was still missing something. So I was like... Eh something's still missing mm -hmm. and so when i released breakthrough or sorry not breakthrough uh service level um that was the first time that i attempted to mix and master myself did not go well mm. um so i went back to my person and then i get uh, <laughs> his name is trav fisher by the way if you ever need a mix mastering person or a person to play guitar cello he plays so many different instruments uh he's a wonderful person to work with uh, reach out to him. He's great. But anyway, I use um, him as my mix, mix and mastering, my producer. Um, and so I, for the album, I was like, okay, I want surface level on it because I want it to be remixed and mastered um, with maybe some some real like guitar in there or something like that, you know? Um, and then I had started writing stuff on the piano between when I released surface level in December until the last like month. Um, just with like some personal things that were going on in my life, I started to feel inspired by different events. Um, and then also things that I was witnessing other people go through. But I think what sets this album apart from any other work that I've done is it's so personal. Um, 
which kind of feeds into that like authentic, honest kind of thing we've been repeating throughout the last 40 minutes. Um, <laughs> it's, it's not too personal. Um, but it's, it's, it's shares a deeper part of my soul than I've ever released. Um, just because I've had a lot of life changes in the last year, but like more recently in the last like six months. And so, um, but with that, I was like, ah, I, I want to do something drastically different, but also still stay within my like kind of you know, go-to instruments, you know? And so what I decided to do is the album is going to be a, uh, I'm not going to say how many tracks because that's a surprise, mm. but it's going to be between a 10 to 14 track album. Okay. You can take your guesses in there. Um, Place your and back, the everyone. first half of it is going to be alternative pop um, with like guitars. I have electric guitar in it. Like I have a real electric guitar in one of the songs and I'm so excited. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's going to be like alternative pop. Um, think, uh, a big inspiration right now has been Willow. Um, and a little bit of like that Chapel Roan, Hemlock Springs, like eighties type, like modern eighties type vibe. But then also I take a lot of influence from Lizzie McAlpine in the way that she kind of like does the vocal flips and like Enya and the cram like cranberries and Ellery Ward has been like on repeat. And so kind of like a mix of all of those in one genre. So whatever you would call that, I'm calling an alternative pop for now. Could be called something different, but that's like the first part of the album. And I have an intro song that kind of sets up that vibe. Um, and I'm a big thriller horror movie fan, not necessarily like gory, but like psychological thrillers. And so I kind of have that like, eerie vibe throughout the songs um and then the second half of the album is very because again I love the strings I think the strings speak to my soul more than any other instrument and um even the piano like I love the piano I consider myself a pianist but I the strings just they hit somewhere else in my heart um and so I was like I really I really want to go orchestral cinematic very like full out you know what I mean so that's the second part of the album and it's I have an interlude piece so it's like an act one act two or part one part two however you want to call it and I have that interlude piece which is the introduction to the second half of the album which sets up because I was like I want to do multiple genres but I don't want to confuse the listener so I was like let's just like break it up into chunks um but they all kind of uh, go in order of like the experiences that I've had in my life over the last year <laughs> Yeah. So one of the things that I that excites me the most about this album and other things that you've done is how excited you get when you talk about it. Um because that's when you know like the the passion is put in it to a certain extent to where like I think the listener will actually feel that. Um I go back to um yeah, I I go back to there was a time you posted yourself listening um to your own song in the car and like yeah. you were just smiling and you were just like even just like nodding along with it so much and i was like you were so proud and so excited of this stuff i have to listen to it was I, I love music so much and i think when i when i listen back to stuff that i've created it's so surreal because i'm like especially most recently like with this album when I tell you that the I started crying when I heard the master back for one of the tracks on my album because I was like, holy shit, it's so like I created this. It's so weird. It's such a weird feeling because I just I just I don't have a structure for what I create. I don't go in with like, okay, I'm gonna do this here and this here and these like it just happens. And so when I hear it all back, I'm like wow, that actually, like, that works, that, 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 like, works, and then I'll find myself, like, repeating, like, different motifs and patterns within, like, maybe, like, a certain lyric finds itself in another song, but, like, it's, like, or, like, in the interlude of <laughs> the little interlude um, that I was talking about in that album, um, it has... <laughs> these uh this specific like chord progression that is found in one of the other songs 
Um, oh gosh, it's so cool. But it's like, it's so small and you'll only know it if you've heard the other song. Like it's, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it's like little Easter eggs. I'll find myself like hiding Easter eggs without even realizing it. And I'll go back and I was like, oh my God, like that's so cool. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's a weird feeling like, uh, hearing something back. Cause I do everything by ear and like, I have music theory behind me now. Um, and especially in the last year and a half I've taken a lot of like music theory courses and stuff but I just do everything based on if it sounds okay um and right. so far it's sounding all right <laughs> it's, it's it's almost like outer body huh because it's kind of like you're creating something and at the time it's like a process of you creating it it's mm -hmm. a weird process and you're thinking of everything and then you do it and then it's all it's all done. You're like watching it back, listening to it back, or anything like that. And you're looking. Right. You're just like, wait a second. Did like did I did I make this? Because this feels. How right. did I come up with this? You know how did I come well, up with this? Well, after I invested in a good mic, I invested in a good mic in 2021, and it changed the quality of my recordings. Um, I still record. I don't record at a studio. I record in my bedroom, um, and I I think there's it's just so. I don't know how to describe it. It's I love I love making music. I I love it with a passion. Um, I it's so weird. It's so cool. <laughs> I I, just, I I don't know what else to say about it other than like the passion is so like it's there's no words. I mean like I'm I'm stumbling over my words because I can't find the words to describe it. Jumping back to musical theater. Yes, we haven't talked about it in a little bit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is what kind of kicked off this whole thing. We're jumping back into musical theater. Um, we okay. So we want to we we want to see where, where where's the show? Where's the show that you you're you're creating? Are you creating a show? Are you going to create a show for us? This oh, like a, a new musical. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I started to um with uh again my mentor Keith. He's he's a really big part of my life. Uh, him and his entire family they um have been really influential for a decade now. Uh, which is cool to think about. A little over a decade, 11 years. Um, but he, we started co-writing this musical. Um, and we took a little, it was during the pandemic. We took a little bit of a hiatus. It's been, it's been a while. It's been like a year, year and a half-ish. Um, but I, I definitely see... I think we're going to revamp everything. I think the songs will probably stay, but I, I think the plot's going to change. I think the characters might change um, because it's a learning curve for both of us. Because um, the only thing... I, I've never written a full-length thing um, at all. So it's it's a learning experience for me because it's like, you know, uh, fleshing out the characters. And I'm, I love character development. And so I, I really want to make sure that, like, we hit all those. We don't have no loose ends, stuff like that. But I think... At some point, probably, probably, um, not currently, not right now. I think I'm so focused on, well, on the album, but also I think I'm uh, focused on like auditioning. I'm still auditioning. Um, and so with my agency, um, which have been, uh, they've been amazing. They've worked really, really hard for me and I'm really appreciative of them. Um, and I'm manifesting either a tour, like a national tour, international tour. Broadway is like, you know, Broadway's great. Broadway's amazing. <laughs> but it's not all about Broadway, you know what I mean? I think I just, I, I'm, I just, I think I'm so focused on some other things that I, I would want to give the time and attention to writing a full-length musical. I would want to give it a full chance and not just kind of, you know, half do it, you know what I mean? Can you give us anything on it? Can you give us like any idea, any spoiler? I would, but it's going to change. What it was in the past was a, <laughs> it was kind of like vibes of you're in town, um, where it was like parody type thing, um, but it was very like like dystopian society type, um, and. Uh, but I was trying to be as like inclusive as possible in terms of like uh, the the songs could be changed in any key and can work in any key for anybody. Um, the roles could be played by any gender. Um, the you know I was trying to like make it 
like as inclusive as possible because I think a big part of our industry that needs to change is the inclusivity and we have we still have a long way to go um, but we're making we're making progress which is great but um I, I that's kind of all I'm going to share about it just because everything is so it's so different now you know what I mean I don't know if it's going to be a dystopian society anymore. It could be about a butterfly. <laughs> I don't know. It could be about something random. Who knows? It could uh, be about a so shark that flies. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> For all we know. Um, um, yeah. yeah. So so you're pretty connected to the musical theater world still? You go to shows? Oh, very you much still... so. I'm still, um, I, you know, I'm still, uh, <laughs> Fingers crossed on something right now. Um, I I am in some callbacks for something right now, but um, I am audition? a big fan. Yeah, actively, still very much. Um, and I I am a big fan of like original works. Uh, I love working on new musicals. New. Um, mm -hmm. I just recently did a musical. Uh, it was a like workshop reading of a new musical. Um, a couple weeks ago, that was really really lovely, really fun. Um, and then, uh, most recently, like the, the, like major production that I did, I was, uh, in Heartbreakers in Hell with Joey Contreras and Ben Halstead, mm -hmm. uh, with Brian Carey as Brian Russell Carey as the music director. And, um, that was an incredible experience because they had like put it up before, but they did a lot of rewrites to the script and they only had like demos for us to listen to. So it was very new, but we got to work with Joey and Ben directly um, and ask them any, you know, questions about like character development and stuff like that. And we got to work with, like working with someone who has written the show. Like that was just a, like such a different um, uh, experience that I had had before. Cause I had really never worked on that original material before, like in that setting. Mm -hmm. Um, and that just sparked my, cause I, you know, I would love to be in Hades town. I would love to be in Wicked. Mm -hmm. I would love to be in a regional production of Heather's, but like something about new works and new material and creating something from the ground up is so enticing and fascinating to me, right. um, that that's kind of where I've, I've been focusing my energy to. Um, so that's why I'm like, fingers crossed for this one particular project, because it's exactly that. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm still auditioning for tours for... Broadway for regional theater um, mm -hmm. for everything. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, the original material like that's like that is like the unknown. That is you know like untraveled territory. Mm -hmm. You know, and you don't know where it will go. Right. Um, and that's kind of like where the bread and butter is. Like it's just like something that's original that pops off, and you're involved with it. Yeah. OGB, like oh my gosh. Yeah, uh, I have I have to give homage to Ellery Ward. Um, I started following her a few years ago on TikTok, and mm -hmm. I've been following her before she started releasing her Sondheim covers. Mm -hmm. But she just instilled, like, just inspired and instilled in me the importance of originality in this industry because it is so competitive. Because there are so many people in it. You have to stay true to yourself and not try to, like, mimic anybody else that's, in quotations, made it, you know? Um, and so kind of following her journey in regards to, like, you know, she graduated with her BFA musical theater. She did auditioning and stuff like that. But she, you know, she didn't, she had stated that she didn't really book anything except for, like, one production. And then when she started, like, actually creating you know, her own spin on things and like leaning more into her vocal flip, which is stunning. It, it, it encouraged me to lean more into my vocal flip because I was always taught that like, oh, you need to get rid of it, mm -hmm. <laughs> smooth it out, you know, which it's, it's such a lovely tool to use. But, um, she inspired me to like lean into more of my original, like my vocal qualities and not try to mold myself into, you know, somebody that's already been on like a cast recording or something like that. You know what I mean? Right. And, um, you know, she's currently doing, I don't know if it's still running. I have to check, but, um, Gatsby, the mm -hmm. A, the A at AC, ART, ART, I think is mm -hmm. what it's called. Um, she got in that and that's an original musical. And she was like, you know, this is, this is what I've always wanted to do. And I'm like, you know what? Yes. Yes. We love that. We love original. <laughs> we love so she's been like a huge inspiration for me in regards to like accepting and like leaning into more of my individuality in the theater. Mm -hmm. 
but yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. I don't know what the point of that is, but <laughs> I just, I had to, I had to pay homage to her because she's been a huge inspiration to me over the last few years. Yeah, Truly. absolutely. Um, speaking of like inspiration, um, yeah. let's, let's shed, let's, uh, let's spread a little bit of that, uh, inspiration, um, to the, uh, the little Kenzies or the, the KZ Liz's because we got to hide the identities. Um, so <laughs> any like new little songwriters, little, you know, little like baby songwriters right now, do you have any like words of wisdom for them? Do you anything like that will help them keep going? Even if it's something that's like, um, they're struggling with or any like advice that like you got that kind of helped you sort of like essentially perfect that craft. Is anything you have to say to them? Don't be afraid to make in quotations, bad art. Cause I, I personally don't think there's bad art or good art. I just think there's art, but don't be afraid to like, you know, have a cheesy lyric in there or maybe, you know, you're kind of messing around with time signatures and it's not sounding right. Like, don't be afraid to like be perfect because it's, it's a process. It's not going to happen overnight. Um, I would say, what else would I tell them? Um, stay true to like your individuality as opposed to trying to mimic what somebody else has done. Facts. Um, take up space. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, those are like the, the top three. It's like, there is room for you in mm -hmm. the industry, mm -hmm. whether people are telling you there's not that's their problem, right? Mm -hmm. um, there's always room for you. Um, and if someone's telling you that there's not, then make them make them see that there is room. Like, you know, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I don't know how else to describe that. Like, mm. yeah, that, I'm going to leave it at that. Take up space. Don't forget your originality. Like, lean, lean into your originality. And don't be afraid, afraid to fail. Don't be afraid mm -hmm. to fail. Mm -hmm. Um, because more often than not, a lot of my songs have come from like, there's one song that I created that came from a mistake in another piece mm -hmm. that I created. <laughs> I was like, Oh, wait, that actually kind of sounds good for another song. Yeah. And then call those happy nothing. accidents. Right. Exactly. Um, because really there's, again, there's no like good art or bad art. There's just different interpretations of art. Mm -hmm. As yeah. long as, oh, and love what you put out. Mm -hmm. Love, don't put out something you don't like, truly. Like, if mm -hmm. you don't like it, put it away. Or put mm -hmm. it on the shelf and, and come back to it. Because it's kind of like reading a book. I'm a big reader. I love books. But don't read a book that you're not interested in. Like, if you get mm -hmm. five chapters in and you're like, oh, this is just not interesting me anymore. Don't force yourself to read through it. Put it on right. the shelf and pick out another one. <laughs> and pick out another one, you know? Mm -hmm. Same thing goes with your songs or with a song, maybe like you're going into an audition, mm -hmm. right? Or you're working on audition material and you're like, oh, this song is just like, it doesn't fit my voice right. Or mm -hmm. I'm not connecting to it. Put it away. Take another one. Do another one. Like, don't feel like you ha don't feel obligated to like stick with something right. if you don't like it enough. You know? Right. Yeah. That, that's, in, that's a beautiful sentiment as well. Like all, especially, you know, the ideas is like, there's, you know, there's room for you in oh, this industry. There's room for you somewhere in this industry in a pocket. And maybe the pocket doesn't exist yet because you are the one who's going to create this exactly. like, pocket. Exactly. You know? um, you're not being the next someone else. You're being the first you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I also like what you said too, is it's like, you know, as far as like, you know, being discouraged about like your voice or anything like that, you know, the idea that, you know, being a good singer means that, like, your relation to a specific song is created equal to all of it. It's kind of like, and I think that musical theater kind of does it best to where, like, there are vocal ranges. Songs are written for certain vocal ranges. And a lot of times if folks want to sing a song that's not in their vocal range, then they take it, flip it, and put it into their mm -hmm. vocal range. You know? Yeah. Don't be afraid um, to change the key. Mm -hmm. Change the keys. <laughs> Seriously, like, change, if you want to sing, I know My Days has been really popular. Mm -hmm. If you want to go into an audition room and sing My Days, but you're like, oh, it's just a little high, but I connect with the song, change the key. Change the key. <laughs> really? Change it up. <laughs> um, 
that's a that's a perfect sta- like statement right there. So since we've been, since we've been talking, and I feel like you can handle this, I'm gonna give yeah. you um I am gonna give you this closing lightning round. Oh, <laughs> a segment. <Okay. laughs> A segment I've done. I've done this to. I don't do this to everyone. Oh, <laughs> I feel so special. <laughs> Not everyone gets it, but I feel like you'll be able to handle it. I um, think so, you ready? We're gonna start off. Your vocal range. D three to comfortably, comfortably like B sharp C six, but I can go up to an E six. Mm-hmm. Yes, you can. Uh, and what's your dream role? You have one. Oh. I, Cinderella into the woods, or um, I believe her name is Janice, uh, the reporter from Come From Away. Mm, amazing. Um, so, if any, is there a favorite role that you have played? Oh, mm, the Heartbreakers one, Heartbreakers in Hell. I was technically called Center Six mm-hmm. because I played like three different roles. Um, but uh, it, it, that experience as a whole was just my favorite production, favorite everything. However, Penelope Pennywise in You're in Town is a close second because mm-hmm. she was my first, like, ever really lead role in, as an adult in college. Okay. Um, what was the last time you auditioned? <laughs> just a few days ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's fresh. I was yeah, hoping that it is. Name. It's always like every time I ask that question, it's like, okay, yeah, the last time you auditioned two seconds ago, right before we did this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, your favorite theater song. Oh gosh. What? Mm-hmm. I'm making you choose. I know it's kinda hard. Mm, I really love Ah. Oh. Honestly, oh gosh, oh gosh, this is so hard. <laughs> songs are difficult. Shows are easy, but like songs are kind of difficult. It changes, I know. <laughs> oh, this is not fair. <laughs> oh, okay, it's not from... It is from a musical. It's from a, a very lesser known musical. It's from The Alchemist. It's called Golden. Mm-hmm. Okay. Amazing. Uh, or we got, Hero yeah. and Leander. Hero and Leander from um, Guru. What is it called? What is it called? Uh, so, hymns and songs of hymns. Hymns and something. It's by Adam Gettle, I want to say. Something mm-hmm. like that. I think. I can't remember. But Hero and Leander and um, uh, Golden from The Alchemist. Yes, we definitely got there. I, I could. I literally like saw like the rolodex of songs like running through your head when you like froze. Oh, that's just so beautiful. Everything's so beautiful. It is. Yeah, it is so awesome. Um, so if there is one, if it was open, if you had to choose, if you had to choose, okay. um, what would be like your go-to audition song? Is there one? Mm. There is not one at the moment because I change it. Like I have my audition book and I change it based on like what I'm going in for. But right. um one of my favorites to sing recently has been um when the music played from Dr. Zhivago. Um, just because there's something about the different time signature changes and the melody and it's just it's such a beautiful yet heartbreaking song but it's so like you like share your soul in the piece um but i love 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 flowers from hades town but i haven't yet used it in an, in an audition setting so i can't really like ans- use that as an answer but i love to sing it mm. yeah we just did that song actually we yeah just, yeah we just did that song we did it a little different Same. Because it was like uh I don't know, it's like a, a heavy like dream role. So when I like brought up I like I knew it was gonna be kinda crazy, so I like I let like five singers sing it. So like and a, a friend of mine, Erica Cruz, very talented um arranger, uh, she like arranged it for five voices, so there's actually like a nice like harmony in there. I, I actually love to yeah, go back and listen so cool. to it. Um it's okay. So this one 
which one of the Merry Murderesses do you identify with the most? Pop, six, squish, not us, Cicero, or lip shit? That's a million questions. <laughs> Oh, I never, <laughs> never today did I think I was going to be asked that question. Um, probably the, he ran into my knife. He ran into my knife ten times. I forget, is that pop, is that? That's squish. No, squish, yeah. Squish. Oh my gosh. Wait, that's so funny. <laughs> yeah. Uh. I love the reaction to that question because it's one of my favorite <laughs> questions that I have on my list. <laughs> um, if you can have dinner with any musical theater performer, alive or dead, who would it be? Oh, oh my gosh. Barbra Streisand, hands mm. down. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That, that yeah. answer came out quick. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly. I love really Barbra Streisand with my whole heart. <laughs> mm hmm. He's fantastic. Um, let's see. Oh, okay. This is a, one of the last questions. If you could bring back a show as a revival, which would it be? If you could bring it back. It's yours. You bring it back. Oh, goodness. Gosh, there's been so many revivals, though. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if it's technically long enough to bring back as a revival. Um, like to Broadway, but I come from away. It's just, it's such a beautiful show. I want it to run longer. Like I want it to come back so bad. Right. It's, it's touring a lot right now, right? I know. That's mm -hmm. why I'm like, I'm, I'm not sure if it's like technically like we're able to do that because it no, hasn't been long enough. It closed, you know, just a little while ago, but a like too bring, soon, it back. But bring it back. <laughs> but once it's been long enough, bring it right back. <laughs> exactly truly mm -hmm. okay and if anyone wanted to become a fan of kenzie elizabeth how could they find you how can they do that uh i am everywhere um kenzie e official on all like social media so instagram i don't have twitter um i had to get it for idol but i don't use it at all um i think it's called x now too right x Something anyway. Instagram, Kenzie E Official, TikTok, Kenzie E Official, YouTube, Kenzie E Official, um, Kenzie Elizabeth, same thing. I um I also have my website, KenzieEofficial.com. Everything's Kenzie E Official, so makes it nice and easy to kind of find everything. And then in terms of music, it's just Kenzie Elizabeth on all platforms. All or platforms. Kenzie Liz if you're interested in doing a deep dive. <laughs> Kenzie Liz, which I which I have. So I do have some Kenzie Liz <laughs> originals. Um <laughs> In my in my repertoire right now, if anyone wants to listen or anything like that. Um, oh, that's so cute! Thank you. That's awesome. <laughs> that that makes me so feel so good that it's still like resonating with you. It's still good. It's, it's really good, later. and it's really good. Um, thank you so. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. Honestly, it's been such thank pleasure you. to talk to you and kind of like pick your brain, creative brain. I, again, I love like seeing you like react and hearing you talk about the things that you make because you there's just a passion passion involved with it and i knew it was something there so i'm a uh, i'm very happy that i got to finally like talk to you Yay, and thank you yeah so as a as a fan and i'm definitely going to be listening and looking out to more of this new <laughs> album that's coming, <laughs> that's coming well i have an announcement this week so uh -oh. hmm, mm. stay tuned <laughs> You heard it here. You heard it uh, here. No, thank you. Truly, thank you for reaching out to me and, and having me on here. I This is great. This is lovely. Yes, of course, of course. Uh, if anything new is coming out or anything, you know, if the stars align again, I'd love to have you back yeah. and we'll talk a little bit more about what you're, the next thing you're sure. doing. I don't know, maybe the new musical you're coming up with, maybe we can talk about that. No. <laughs> <laughs> Although, if you're not following my friend Grace Yurchuk, mm. you need to be following Grace Yurchuk. She is incredible. And she's currently writing a musical right now. Mm -hmm. She writes songs every single day, posts them on social media every single day. Um, but she's currently writing a musical about like uh, uh, Caesar and like you know Roman Empire and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. like, and it's really good. It's really good. So go check out Grace Yurchuk. If, oh if you want a new musical in your pocket <laughs> yes honest, artist supporting artists is what we love that's what <laughs> that's what we love thank you guys this has been performers wanted and we're signing out and this is it we are out <laughs>